Hello there. Today I'm going to show you how to stack and combine different filters using PixInsight. And uh, we're looking at the Pac-Man Nebula that I captured right now. And I'm going to take you through the process from start to finish on how I did all my processing with this image. And um, one thing to note is that I'm definitely not an expert in PixInsight. I only know the most basic features to get the job done. And if, if, if that's all you want to know is the most basic stuff, then this demo is for you. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this into four parts. The first part will be getting rid of the bad lights that you have. Then we'll do the stacking. Then we'll do the combine, which will create our color image. And then we'll do our little a little bit of post-processing to get the image to look something like this. So let's get started and get rid of our bad lights. Now, I happen to live about 20 minutes north of Detroit Metro Airport, so I have to throw away quite a bit of images because of planes. So that's what I'm going to do right now. And PixInsight has a, a, a cool feature to help you spot bad images. Oh, I probably went too fast there. I'm going to go into Process, All Processes, and B-Link. I'm going to open up this folder here. And I've already created a, a folder with PixInsight demo. This has all of my flats and light images. So I'm going to click on highlight one light and just scroll all the way down and select all my lights. My HA, my oxygen, my sulfur lights, and click open. And what we want to do here is, um, some images might be a little too dark, so let's just highlight all of them by hitting shift and then clicking on the top one or the bottom one. Now they're all highlighted, and let's click this top button here. This will make everything the same brightness. And this is not permanent, it's just for preview right now. So it's going to let us take a quick preview of our files, and we'll see if we've got issues with some of these files, and I already saw that I've got some planes, so this takes about a minute to complete. Okay, so I'm going to click on the first one, and I'm just going to start eyeballing all these, and I'm going to use my down arrow key just to scroll through them. There's the first plane. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this one right here and remove this file from the list. Hopefully you don't have as many planes as I do. I, I get bombarded with them. It shifts a little because my telescope moves throughout the night. It's always it's not usually going to be perfect, especially when I switch filters. Things move a little bit. Uh, it looks like there's a I don't know if that was a satellite, but that's another bad one I want to get rid of. So I'm going to hit that button again. Yep, more lines up there. Let's get rid of that one. That's three I removed. That's 15 minutes worth of data I just lost. Yeah, it looks like something just flew by here. That's the fourth one. Let's hit this to get rid of it. Okay, well, I only had to delete four images, 20 minutes worth. I can live with that. So what we want to do now is click this arrow right here, and this is going to move all of our good files to a different folder. I'm going to go here to my PixInsight demo. I'm going to create a new folder. Let's just call this data. Click there and select folder. Now it moved all of our good, <clears throat> actually I don't think it moved all of our files, I think it only moved the last one that I had highlighted. We actually have to, let's go to the, the top here, click on the first one, scroll to the bottom, hit shift, and click on the last one. Now, oh, I just lost it again. This is fussy. Click on the last first one, click on the last one, now let's move them. Okay, 
we've got them all. Now we'll move on to uh, the stacking. That'll be fun. And that's the end of part one. Thanks. Okay, now that we've picked out all of our good light images, let's move on to the stacking. And this is just left over from the previews we were doing. Let's close that. And what we want to do is go into, uh, not process actually, you want to go into script, batch pre-processing, and again, batch pre-processing. This is where we're going to select all of our files that need to be stacked. Now, just one note, if you don't like using PixInsight for stacking, there is another option. You could just use Deep Sky Stacker and stack everything separately in that. And then, let's close that, just to show you really quick, after you've done that, oh, I should have said yes there. If you've done Deep Sky Stacker, you could go into, let's see, I think there's star alignment. That would then show you, or at least allow you, to line everything up perfectly. So this is what you would use if you were using Deep Sky Stacker, but we don't need to deal with this. We're going to do it through Pix and Site. So let's go back into script, batch pre-processing, and again, batch pre-processing. And let's go right down the list. Uh, we're going to add in our bias files, our darks, our flats, and our lights. And um, uh, there's a button here to do all of that, but what I've noticed is that these buttons are fussy. If you say add bias and you click on your bias files, depending on your, your naming conventions of the files, it may or may not work for you. It, it may say these aren't bias files, so I just skip all of these buttons and I use the add custom button. Um, it never fails, so that's what I would recommend. It, it forces you, it forces the program to say, yes, these are bias. So you click Add Custom, and I'm going to say Add Files. The first thing I want to add are my bias files, and I have my own library for bias files. Uh, I did five minute exposure, so I have a library of bias files for uh, five minute exposures. I just hit Control A to highlight all of them. I'm going to say open. Okay, I've got all my bias files here and it says image type. You just click on bias and type in bias to give the, the filter a name. Click OK. And now you can see all of your bias images right here. Now we'll do the same for darts. Add custom. Add files. Go to my library. Add my darts. That master file was for something else. Don't worry about that. Just add in your darts. And let's select dark frame and we'll call this dark. Now we've got all our darts. Uh, next, let's do our flats. We're going to click add files. Let's go back to our Pixel Site demo, and here are our flat images. And I titled them all flat for HA, so I know which ones I'm working with. So I'm going to highlight those for my hydrogen alpha flats. I'm going to click flat field. I'm going to call these HA. And I think these names are important because this is how it matches up my flats with my lights for HA. I, I believe that's how it's doing that. At least I hope so. I'm going to click OK. Add custom. My oxygen filter. Last for that. Pick flat. Call that OIII. And you can see in the flat tab here, I've got my hydrogen alpha. Now I moved on to my oxygen. Now we've got to add um, one more for the sulfur. Flats. Call it SII. 
Okay, so now I've got my hydrogen plants, oxygen, and sulfur. All right, one last one to do. Let's do our lights. Add, and we're going to click on this data file. That's where we put all of our good lights. And we're going to do the oxygen ones, all that light. Let's see. Call that light, yep. We're going to say OII. I. I. <laughs> Click OK. And now we've got our lights, and hopefully that O of I, I, I will match up with that, that, our flats for OII. And let's go ahead and click on our sulfur lights. Click on light. S, I, I. Add in our final lights for the hydrogen alpha. Open. Lights. HA. Okay, now if we scroll down, we should see all of our different lights. We've got all of our different flats, our darts, and our bias. And one last step is, you know, I stick with all of the defaults. Maybe I shouldn't, but I leave it as is. I like to keep things simple. Um, what you want to do here is you want to put in a registration reference image. And you usually want to pick your best light image that you have to use as a reference. Um, for me, I didn't really inspect each one individually. So I'll just pick, I think they were all pretty good. I'll just click uh number four on the hydrogen alpha. So that's populated. And I'm going to click on this folder for the output directory. I'm going to pick some site demo. I'm going to call this one, I'm going to make a new folder, I'm going to call it process. Select folder. Select that folder. And when I hit run, it's going to start stacking everything together and create separate master files for the HA, the oxygen, the sulfur. And what it's also going to do is it's going to automatically line up everything so that they fit perfectly when you're ready to merge them. So you get two things in one going on there. So I'm going to hit run. It gives you this merge every time you do it. Um, keep in mind that light frame integration of, of this script is just convenience feature. Well, okay, I like convenience, whatever. Let's just go with it. Hit continue. And we're off. It's going to do our stacking. And this is probably going to take 20 minutes to an hour, depending on how many files you've got. So I'm going to end this part of the demo here, and we'll be right back. Thanks. OK, uh, I am back. And uh, the batch preprocessing is done, and I've already closed out that window. We didn't need that anymore. And what it did is, if we go here, you can see um, in the process folder, it created three subfolders, calibrated, master, and registered. And all we need here is the master. And it created master bias, dark, and the flat files. And all we're going to be using out of this bunch is the light filter. So let's go back into PixInsight and open up the lights. I'm going to click on all three here. And what it's doing is it's opening uh, three instances per file and it's showing us our rejection files. And we don't really care about the rejection one. So it says high, rejection high, we don't need that. Rejection low, we don't need that. And here's our uh, sulfur master. And again, let's get rid of the high is the high, we don't need that. That says low, we don't need that. And this is our oxygen master. We click in high, we don't need that. And low, we don't need that. Okay, we have our three master files now stacked. So let's go into process and take a look at them. Um, we're going to go into all processes and we're going to click on the screen transfer function. And we're going to hit, uh, let's highlight one of the files, the masters here. We're going to hit this little circle here 
with the three triangles, and it's going to let us take a, a look at our files. And that's how the sulfur looks. That's how that one looks. And let's see our hydrogen alpha. That's how that one looks. And you can see um, the pictures look rotated, and that's what it does when you're stacking in pixels. Like it's going to rotate each master so that the stars will line up perfectly. So we'll I'll show you how to just easily crop those right now. But first, let's go and do a temporary combination and see how our files actually look when they're combined. And um, this is set up. Oh, I probably went too fast. Let me slow down here. I clicked on process, all processes, LRGB combination. All right. And what this is set up for is set up for luminance, red, green, and blue. Now we're using hydrogen narrow band filter, so um, we only have three, so we're not going to use the luminance. And in the red, I'm going to put the hydrogen alpha, the HA. And in the, the green, I'm going to put in the oxygen filter. And in the blue, I am going to put in the sulfur. And normally, if you had uh, luminous red, green, blue filters, you wouldn't want to actually combine them all together like this. You'd want to combine the red, green, blue by themselves through your, your final processing and process the luminance on its own. And when you're done, um, then come back and combine them. It has to do with linear versus nonlinear, but that's a different topic. You could probably look, look that up. I've seen some people try to um, combine everything all at once, and, and you do get results, but maybe not the best result. And uh, now that I've got my narrowband filters populated, I'm going to hit uh, the circle here, and let's see how they look. Okay. Um, that is our image. This is our combined image, and of course we're going to have to uh, stretch it again and see what it looks like inside. You hit this little circle here, and don't worry if it looks like that. It looks bad, but that's because it did a stretch with all of our files linked. So what we want to do is we're going to unlink it. Click this little link here, uncheck that. Now let's sort of stretch it again. Ah, much better. <laughs> I was panicking the first time I ever tried that. This is much more uh, to what I would have expected the file to look like. And... Uh, uh, you can see because our pictures were rotated a little bit, it came up funny looking around the edges. So let's let's just fix that right now and make all of our pictures the exact same size. Um, let's go into uh, geometry, dynamic crop. I'm going to click on this little button here on the far right, and we're going to move this just enough so that we've got a clean. Uh, just move it around. I think that's about good enough. We don't have to hit the check mark here. We're going to leave that like it is. But now we're going to take this little triangle here and we're going to drop it on all of our masters and it will make everything the exact same size. That's one. Now let's take this triangle here and move it to this one. That's two. And let's drop it on our hydrogen alpha. Now all of our masters are the same size. Now that we've got them all the same size, let's save them off. Um, we don't need this anymore for now. We'll come back to that later. Oh, I can't close it until I get rid of dynamic crop. Okay. Let's save off the HA, save it as. We want to save it as an XISF file. And I'll just say HA for that one. Yes. Let's save the oxygen filter. Save as. We're just doing this so we have a checkpoint to go back to. Save as, and we'll make this SII. SII. Okay. Uh, now that's the end of that part. I'm going to come back in a second. Thanks. Okay, now that these files are saved off, you, you might want to do an automatic background extraction on these. Maybe it will help, maybe it won't. Um, I'm going to see how it looks on the S on the sulfur file. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Process, Background Modelization, and Automatic Background Extraction. Um, all right, and I'm going to go down to the bottom, leave all the defaults in place, but I'm going to go down to the bottom, and for correction, I'm going to say Subtraction. And I'm going to hit this little square here. And it's supposed to fix up the gradients, whatever gradients are. This is the background it pulled out. We don't need that. Let's close that, and let's stretch this one. Now, do we see much difference here between this background and this one? I don't see a whole lot of difference. I mean, whatever looks better to you, you can keep it. Um, if you want, or just stick with the original image. Uh, for now, I'm just going to keep the original, and I'm not going to go with the background extraction. So let's pull up our LRGB Combine again. Go into All Processes, LRGB Combination, and um, if these aren't filled out, or if they have the wrong file name for some reason, uh, you can just repopulate them with the correct filters. Uh, let's see, in, if, if it doesn't like the names, it'll give you an error. So I'll just see what we got here. Uh, hit the circle. Now we shouldn't have those rough ed edges again since I did the dynamic crop. Okay, let's close that. And let's stretch it again. Okay, now that doesn't look too bad. Now from here, uh, Maybe um, I could do an automatic background extraction because it looks it looks very uneven between this this side of the picture and this side of the picture. Maybe automatic background extraction will help. Let's do go here background modelization, automatic background extractor. Uh, it's already set for subtraction. I'm going to hit the square. Close that. And this is the background it pulled out. Let's close that. Here's the original. Now let's stretch this one and see what it looks like. Okay, I I think that looks way better than this other one. That the background looks a little more even. And uh, you could probably do a background neutralization or color calibration. There's a million different things you can do in Pixinsight, but I'm keeping this simple and. I'm just going to keep this image as it is for now. Let's close this. And uh, let's close our, just close our, let's hit the up arrow on our master. We don't really need these anymore because this final combined image is the one we're going to be keeping for now. And again, I'm going to close this demo really quick and I'll be right back. All right, I am back. And um, one thing I, I also could mention that when you're doing a combine, if you notice um, your picture is way too green or way too red or all over the picture, or way too blue, there's a fix for that where you can go into linear fit. Now if you're way too green, you could actually pick your green master image or whichever filter you think is causing the image. You would select it here and then you would hit OK, and then you would drag this onto the other filter images, whether it was blue or red or whichever filter you're using, and that would actually um, try and balance out the image so that it's it's not too heavy of one thing versus the other. Uh, there, there's a million, million, it's a million ways to do everything to balance things out. So that's the linear fit, but I don't think I really need it at this time. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to unstretch the image and use the histogram to start really getting to what the final image is going to look like. I'm going to hit uh, this right farmost button here to unstretch it. Now we're back to how the image really looked. If you were to save it, this is how it would look. So let's go into Process, Intensity Transformation, and Histogram. And... I'm going to hit this preview button, the circle here, and what we want to do is drag this middle arrow over to the left as far as we can, 
until we see something that looks good. But the, the, the thing is, uh, how do you really know <laughs> how much to drag it over? And I like to use, use this feature. I'm going to hit stretch again. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is uh, it, it turned my preview white. But I'm going to drag this little triangle down here. And now, it even turned it more white, and now I'm going to hit this square to actually execute it on our main image. It's in the background there, you can barely see it. And I'm going to execute it, and now it turned our main image white. But that's okay. Uh, I'm going to unstretch this now, hit this button on the far right of the screen transfer function, and that just produced our final stretch, our, our histogram. It really, it, it, I hope you were able to follow along, but it really did the work of our histogram adjustment for us. Now if I stretch the image, there's very little difference. Because if you were to save the file now, this is how it would look like. We, we've done our histogram the easy way using the screen transfer function. But of course, to clean it up a little bit more, we can go into intensity transformation curves transformation, and we can darken the background a little bit, maybe make the nebula a little brighter. Let's hit the preview here. What I always tend to do is I tend to drag the, the line a little bit down. It makes the background a little bit darker, but you don't want to lose too much nebulosity when you do that. Maybe a little bit more. And then you can go up a little higher, and this would impact the nebula, make that a little brighter. And that is probably good enough for now. And then you could just save it off. Oops, I made a mistake here. Curves transformation. I forgot to actually save it to the X, to the final image. Let's close this and hit the square here so that it's saved to the final image. And that's it. And now you could, you could do, you could have done noise reduction earlier in the process or later. You can adjust clarity, um, well, maybe in Photoshop if you want to do that. You can do a million things with it right now. <laughs> but I'm going to end the demo right here. Uh, you can just save it off as a JPEG, whatever you want to do. Um, save it off as a um, XISF again, or just as a JPEG. Take it into other programs, or save it as a raw image, whatever you want to do. That is our final image, and I don't know. I hope this demo didn't confuse you too much, but you can see... Uh, all I did was uh, remove, from start to finish, I removed the bad light images. I did the batch uh, pre-processing. I did the combine, and I did the histogram, and a little bit of curves. I did very little post-processing, really, if you compare to other people. They're making their stars smaller. They're, they're, they're doing a whole bunch of stuff. But I just show, hopefully showed you how quickly you can get something that looks halfway decent. And that's the end. I hope this helps. Thanks. Bye.